But what we uh, were writing to in, in the trellis and the vine particularly is where the organising work, the trellis side, has taken over. Hmm. And uh, sometimes even losing vine work along the way because people are so busy organising things in church mm. that they don't have the time or even the, the, the thought in their head that they can be ministering the word to each other along the way. Mm. And so ministry has become being on a roster, providing some service, which is very godly and very important, um, but very few actually speaking the word of God to each other in church life and therefore not speaking very much to the neighbours either mm -hmm. or to the work colleagues. Mm -hmm. So we're addressing the problem of the trellis taking over and the vine work being uh, diminished mm. and, and lost and only being done by a few, yes. that kind of problem. Yes. Yep. When I read the book, one of the thoughts I did have though, thinking about this metaphor of trellis and the structures and programs that we have placed in a typical church to make ministry happen is that there's a part of us all, I think, that is attracted to trellis ministry. Mm -hmm. And perhaps one of the reasons why is because it's easy to measure. Yeah. And it's it's a finite thing. It's easy to say a certain project is done mm -hmm. or we've reached our budget or we've built that new addition to the building. Whereas vine work never ends. Yeah. This side of eternity does it. And so there's a part of us that, to everyone, it, it's appealing to do trellis work to some mm -hmm. degree um, be, because it's measurable. Yeah. You've got it to remember it's, yeah, it's a godly service though. People are doing it out of a good heart mm. for the service of the Lord Jesus Christ. But um, it is hard working with people. Mm. You, you, uh, you never finish with somebody. Right. There's always some more encouragement and people are often uh, uh, having struggles in life. And so it's costly for us to get alongside them and open the word with them. Mm. Uh, it affects our burdens and our... our Heart. And trellis works a bit, uh, a bit less personal than that. The th one thing we have to remember thinking through this metaphor is that when we think about a trellis and the vine, the trellis is an inanimate object. It's, mm. it's, it's a wood trellis. Yep. The vine's the organic growing um, object. Mm. But as we apply that metaphor to church life, the trellis is run by people yep. who are yep. not inanimate. They're people who need to run the books for us. Yep. Yep. They need to care for the building. And they have value and they're God's people providing mm. a godly service. So right. um, there's a bit of a tension there, it seems, isn't there, that these are people, not yeah. an inanimate object we're, we're dealing with. That's right. And there's a diversity of gifts. Mm. Um, it's clearly, there are a lot of word gifts that uh, the New Testament talks about, mm. um, including uh, all, in 1 Corinthians uh, 12 to 14 and 1 Peter 4 and Ephesians 4 and so on. Um, but there clearly there are many gifts are the organizing gifts. Mm. And, and we need to get the, the round pegs into the round holes and the square pegs into the square holes mm -hmm. uh, and, and not uh, be uh, uh, mm. in unnatural ways um, making people feel bad because they're not uh, serving in some way that doesn't suit them. Mm. So we've got, to, we've got to be clear on the, on the diversity of the gifts. But somehow we're using the doctrine of gifts to uh, suggest that very, very few people um, uh, have the gift of speaking. Mm. And we're not talking about pulpit speaking now, but just speaking to one another. Mm. Whereas when you look at uh, Ephesians 5 and, uh, and passages like that, when we have the Spirit of God, what the Spirit of God does is open our mouth. Mm. We speak in song to each other, we encourage one another, we confess Christ, we can only confess Christ because we have the Spirit of God, 1 mm. Corinthians 12. So the, the, the Spirit-filled Christian is a speaking person. And so part of my conception of this is those who are uh, working at organising church life, the, uh, the committees, the uh, eldership team, the uh, management team and mm. so on, they are involved in word ministry to each other. Mm. Uh, when they have their committee meetings, uh, they open the word with each other and they encourage each other. They find someone is struggling through a bereavement, they'll go to each other and share a verse of scripture. Mm. Um, so the, the, the word of God and speaking the word of God is just embedded in the culture of the church mm. and uh, in 101 different ways. And, and culture is important there in terms of it's just the normal way we function around here. Mm. And uh, that needs to be changed in lots of our churches. Mm. Yep. The Trellis and the Vine is the title of the book, but you've got a very provocative subtitle mm. that says the mind shift that changes everything. Yep. What are you and Tony talking about when you say the mind shift that changes everything? Well, we, we were thinking about that theological mind shift, that we're all involved as a community of disciples making disciples. Um, but as we've talked to lots of pastors in our workshops the last five years, uh, we've come to the conclusion 
that it's not just the mind shift. Because it's to do with church culture, the mind shift is the starting point. That is the theological understanding of what church looks like, what every member ministry looks like. But you, you also need, uh, as, as well as the mind shift, some clear building blocks or phases or steps to move the church from what the culture is now to what you want it to be. And that's, uh, that's where we're going in uh, a sequel mm -hmm. that, that we're writing, um, if I can put an ad in here, mm. um, to do more about what, what do you actually change systematically over time, maybe even over many years, to implement the mind shift. And the trellis and vine metaphor, it is only a metaphor, and all metaphors are limited, mm. and all metaphors can be skewed, but it has proved to be a really helpful way of analysing church life mm -hmm. in the light of the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. yep.